Today we're going to be looking at the Pioneer DMH-W4660 Nex. Now this is a touchscreen uh, radio by Pioneer. It's a capacitive touchscreen, meaning it's just like your phone. This one works with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, wireless and wired, uh, Alexa, and you can also use the iData Link Maestro to show your gauges, tire pressure, etc. I'll show you that later in the video. And uh, Metra. And it also has like Bluetooth, HD radio, you can have Sirius XM if you have the adapter. It has Wi-Fi, so if you turn on the hotspot on your phone, you can connect the radio to it and have additional features like weather, sports teams results, and stuff like that. Like you can see right here, it shows the sports teams results. Um, it has high definition audio. You got the aux, you got USB. You can have two phones connected. You can have the steering wheel controls. I use the iData Link MISO for steering wheel controls, gauges and to view tire pressure and stuff like that. You have like a 13 band equalizer. Um, you got all kinds of stuff. You can use Android Auto wirelessly and wires. Same thing with Apple CarPlay. It's a really great radio. You don't get a CD player, but I don't really use CDs anymore, so that's fine by me. Anyways, uh, stay tuned and we'll go ahead and jump in the car. All right, so looking at the Pioneer DMH W4660 next, you can see that this is the main home screen. On the left, you got the radio going on, whichever, uh, source is selected that's what we'll show here you have the clock and then you have a section that says no Wi-Fi connection now in order for that to work you have to turn on the hotspot on your phone and then you go to the settings on the radio and you connect to the hotspot which enables Amazon Alexa and it'll show weather or like sports teams results there etc so um, looking from uh, left to right you can set these icons to anything you want I have Android Auto HD radio Bluetooth audio settings car features and the phone, which if you have Android Auto running, the phone will go to that interface. And then if you have Apple CarPlay running, the phone will go to the Apple CarPlay interface. Now let's go ahead and look at the um, the main home screen first. So if I click this, it'll go to HD radio because that's the source I have highlighted on that original home screen. And then obviously you can set the stations and you can see the little HD symbol. Now the difference between this radio and the W4600 um, is that one doesn't have HD radio but this one does so anytime you go to an HD radio station you'll see the HD indicator now it might play an SD for a quick second or two and then once it finds the HD signal it switches to HD and you can tell the difference in the quality now obviously I have the sound off due to uh, copyright issues and stuff like that so um, and then this button you can go back to the home screen so that was the uh, this interface right here now over here you got the clock. If you hit that, then you can adjust the clock and the dates. And then right here, no Wi-Fi connection. You have to turn on the hotspot for your phone. And then uh, looking over here, you have the home screen, you have the microphone, you have the volume up and the volume down. Now let's go ahead and uh, look at these options right here. I'll, I'll save Android Auto for a little bit. Let's go through the settings. So the settings, the first tab you have your favorites. Second tab you have your system settings. Third tab is customization. You can change the colors on the lights, the background, the clock, how the clock looks. And on the home screen, you can move uh, the, uh, you know, the different bubbles in different areas if you want like the radio stuff on the right instead of left or uh, if you want the weather on the left instead of the right. Over here, you have the audio settings. Right here is for video settings. And right here is the Wi-Fi settings that are built into the radio where you can connect to the hotspot on your phone. Now, starting from top to bottom, the favorites, I don't have any favorites registered yet. If you want to register a favorite, you just highlight the star right there, and it'll become a favorite, and you can see it right there. So on the settings, you have the AV source. You can turn on the aux or the HDMI on or off. Beep tone is every time I hit something, you hear the beep. Amazon Alexa is grayed out because I don't have the hotspot on yet. I'll show you that in a little bit. Input-output settings is if you want the aux and the AV uh, on or off. And actually, the AV source settings is like changing how the radio looks or the serious settings, like if you want artists or songs displayed, stuff like that. Going to the camera settings, you can have the polarity battery or ground. I just leave it on default because that works for my vehicle. Every vehicle is different. Back camera input, I have it on because I use it. And then you can adjust the parking uh, lines right here. Um, going back to the settings page. So below camera settings, you have the demo. Um... Okay, the demo's off. System language, English. Restore settings if you want to go back to factory defaults. Clock settings is just like that home screen where you can change the clock and the date. Dimmer settings. Um, I have it on auto, but you can set it custom if the screen's too bright or too dim. You can adjust it yourself. Going down below to picture adjustments. 
I just, uh, this is also with dimmer settings and whatnot, that, and it's also to change the brightness of the screen. I just leave it on default, it works for me. Um, uh, I'll go back to system information. Um, on this one, you can view the firmware information. Like I just upgraded to 1.13, and it was like at, it was at the default, which I think was like 1.00 or something like that. This just fixed a couple bug issues. You can see the serial number, you can see the model name. Um, you can adjust the 3D touch screen on your thing. Connection status. Now this, you can view the connections for what you have connected to the back of your radio. I have the GPS working. Um, it shows you where I'm at, or the position of the satellite, I guess. Installation okay, speed pulse okay, back signal low. I don't know what that means, but everything is working fine. License, you can view the license in English or French. Going to the left. Background, you can change the... Um, the background wallpaper for the home screen, I just have it on this color, but there's different ones. There's actually two, upload your own image or off. And then the AV is like when you're playing music and stuff, you can have that, or you can have this one. There's a few moving ones. There's three moving ones. This one is like the bars based on the beat. Um, and then there's a couple standalone ones, and then there's your own image or off. Illumination, I can change the colors of, I can choose these default ones that Pioneer gave us, or you hit this and you do a custom color that you want. There's like 112 colors or something like that. Um, going back, theme, I have it on the orange setting because that matches like the orange colors for my car, that's default. There's also like a pink, blue, green, white, oh, actually a different shade of blue, so I just leave it on orange. And then going to the clock, you can change the clock look. There's three different looks. I just leave it on this one. Um, home custom settings. This is where you can adjust the home screen and you can move icons around, stuff like that. So I just like how it is right now. That's how I set it up. Um, going back to this, that, that's it for the uh, customization. Now for the sound, the fader balance, you can make it go left, right, up, or down based on how you want your speakers to sound. Loudness. There's a low, medium, high, or off. Um, master Sound Retriever Mode 1. I think this, it says it improves the sound quality of compressed sound sources to get them closer to the original sound. Mode 1 for low compression sound sources. Mode 2 for high compression sound sources. I just leave it on Mode 1. That's the default setting. Speaker level. You can adjust the uh, decibels on any speakers in your car. The subwoofer, I can do that too because I have a sub installed. It might be great out if you don't have one. Listening position. Um, let's go ahead and I just have it on off. You can have different positions of which direction you want the sound to come from. Um, time alignment. I just leave that on on. That's default setting. That's probably like if your, so your sound isn't in sync with the lyrics or something like that. Graphic equalizer. I leave it on custom one. There's also a vocal flat dynamic. Vivid and custom one or custom two. Basically, I just leave it on dynamic and then I adjust the last three a little higher because I like the vocals a little bit higher. And then it says it as custom. Subwoofer on or off, I have it on because I have a sub in the back. Crossover settings, you can have the direction of the sub. And then low pass filter on or off. Now if you adjust the low pass filter on your amp, then you should probably leave it off on here. But if you adjust it on here, then you should leave it off on your amp. Now going down, uh, dynamic ba bass enhancer, I have it on off because I, I adjust the bass at the amp. Uh, mute level, I have it on off, but basically this is kind of like um, if somebody calls, it'll make the sound go down, stuff like that. Um, going down, subwoofer settings, that's about the same as that crossover thing, I just leave it on off. You can save your sound settings, you can load them. Over here you got the video setup, video signal setting. Ox is auto, back camera auto, everything's on auto by default. And then over here is the Wi-Fi thing. Now the connection, I'm going to go ahead and hit that. I am connected to the Pixel 4XL via Bluetooth. It'll play uh, audio, calls, and data. That's what this means. You can delete it or you can keep it. Bluetooth settings, auto connect on, visibility on, meaning the radio can always, I can always see the radio with a phone. Default code, triple, uh, four, quad zeros. Device information will show you your phone. You can have auto answer that's automatically off. I don't think anybody wants that on. Sound quality, you can have quality or connectivity. I don't know the difference yet. I just leave it on quality. That's default. 
uh, Wi-Fi hotspot settings. Okay, this is, now the Wi-Fi is off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And then on my phone, I'm gonna go to the settings and I'm gonna go to, um, let's see, go to network and internet, mobile uh, hotspot and tethering. I'm gonna turn that on. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and go to easy, okay, uh, let's see if it connected. Okay, I'm gonna go to easy setup. Okay, hold on. Hotspot setting, okay, it's already connected to Pixel 4 XL. But obviously, if you are setting this up for the first time, it won't show anything. So you'll have to hit the scan icon, and it'll show you a list of all the Wi-Fi networks, and you connect to one. So I'm connected to Pixel 4 XL. Now, let's go back to the home screen. Now you can see your location. It says 80 degrees Fahrenheit. If I click that, it'll show me the weather because I am connected to the hotspot on my radio. Now let's go back to the home screen. If I hold this... You can show other things. You can show sports teams, your phone book, your camera, and etc. I just like the weather. It looks pretty nice. Now let's go ahead and go back to settings over here, Amazon Alexa. Now this is not grayed out because I have the hotspot on main menu. Things to try, settings, help and feedback, sign out, things to try. Let's just do uh, weather. Alexa, how's the weather? Oh, hold on. Okay, so these are just things to try. Um, so you pretty much have to set this up on your own, you know. These settings aren't grayed out because the hotspot is on. I personally don't use Amazon Alexa just because uh, I like Android Auto better. So that's what I do. Now I'm going to go here, Wi-Fi hotspot. I'm going to go ahead and turn this back off. And then we'll go ahead and show you the Android Auto stuff on here. Okay, so on the home screen, now this might go away because I shut the hotspot off, we'll see. Um, but I'll go ahead and go to Android Auto. And as you can see, I'm connected to Android Auto wirelessly. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cover the screen real quick just to move my location somewhere else real quick. Okay, so there's the map. Now, as you can see, I'm connected with my phone. It says connected to your car and I'm con I and I don't have any wires. So it works wired or wirelessly, which is nice. Wirelessly, It'll obviously drain more battery, but you can plug it into a, um, you know, a cigarette lighter or 12 volt, volt port and get faster charging than you can with the radio. Also, it's good for short trips. So you don't have to plug into the cable, you know what I'm saying? So we'll go ahead and leave this up here. And then right here, you can see that you have the map right here and you can go to settings. This is just Android Auto in general. You can show traffic on or off. That's where you see a little yellow and green right there because the traffic is light. You can have satellite on or off. So that shows you the satellite view. And then there's other options too. Um, now if we go to right here, this is the main menu. So it shows you, it always shows a maps. It either shows maps or ways, and it'll always show the phone right there. These two apps are your most recently used apps that you opened recent. So I used Play Music and TuneIn Radio. Now other options, you have Exit, and then you have other apps like Apple Music Calendar, iHeartRadio, the news, podcast, radio.com, settings. Now, all these apps like radio.com, podcast, ways, I have installed on my phone. You have to have it installed on your phone for it to show up. And it has to be compatible with Android Auto. You can also get Spotify, Pandora, and there's a couple other apps. Weather, uh, YouTube Music. Um, so this is the main home screen. So if I'm on the maps, then I can go ahead and click the music, and that'll go, so this is back and forth. So you got music and then maps. So these are the last two apps to go back and forth. Now you can hit play, and I have the sound turned down for copyright uh, situ uh, issues, you know. So if I hit this, I'll go ahead and go to the music, and you can see that it's playing now. And this is basically the regular Google Play Music interface. Uh, obviously, uh, Google is gonna be getting rid of Google Play Music and it'll turn into YouTube music, but that's a different story for another day. Um, so basically, that's your music interface. You can have other apps too, like TuneIn Radio, and you'll just play this music, and it'll buffer and then play. So that's just another example. You can also uh, use Waze for Android Auto. So I'm going to go ahead and cover this and move it over a little. Okay, so you can see that there's Waze. 
go back here and then you can see Waze is right there because that was the last uh, Maps app that I used. Now let me go ahead and show you, let's go to settings. Now you can turn on these, you can have show message notifications on or off, show sound on or off. There's a, a different show weather up here on or off. And then there's more settings but you have to do it on through your phone not through the radio. So we'll go ahead and go back here, calendar. I don't have any events today. And you can see that that's how Android Auto works pretty much. Now I can go ahead and go here. What's the weather like in San Diego? Currently in San Diego, it's 75 degrees with haze. So you, Today, it'll be foggy with a forecasted high of 83 and a low of 65. So you can see that it works with uh, your voice. Now, since this is part of the Google ecosystem, I can use it to control things in my house, too. Now, watch this. Set the security to away and guardian. Okay, you have one minute to exit. So, Setting to away and guarding. So the reason why this is working is because I use Google Nest and I have the security system from them. And since this is all the ecosystem, even though I'm driving my car and I can be 100 miles away, uh, I can control the house from here so I can have it turn on. All right, guys, sorry about that. The uh, camera got a little too hot and it shut off. Now you get the gist of Android Auto. You can pretty much control everything in your car and your home as long as you're connected to the Google ecosystem with Nest. Uh, now one last thing I wanted to show you with this radio. Um, obviously on the home screen you can go left for notifications, you can go right for all your apps and stuff like that. Everything is, you know, iPod, Wi-Fi, audio, HDMI if you have it connected, Sirius XM if you have the adapter, which I don't have, aux if you want to use a 3.5. But one other cool thing I wanted to show you is this car features thing. Now you have to have the iDatalink Maestro RR kit installed in your car. You connect it to the OBD2 port and there's also like a little adapter cable system that you get depending on what model and make of a vehicle you have. Now you can check out the iDatalink Maestro online. I'm not sponsored by them, but this is what I love about this radio. Now you got several tabs on the left side and you can see the reason how I, or the way I got to the screen was, you know, just even if I'm on the home screen, just go to car features and it'll show you. Now you, right here you have gauges, tire pressure and check engine light. Uh, AC controls, parking sensors, radar detector, and this is like uh, if you have a screen in the back seat. Now the first two are 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 working um, because they're, like they're not grayed out because I my car is compatible with them. Now usually the AC units will work, but since I have AC units right below the screen. Uh, it's grayed out because I have an external AC uh, control. This car doesn't have parking sensors, so it's grayed out. I don't have a radar connector connected, and I don't have a screen in the back, so those are grayed out. So I'm gonna go over the first two. Now the first two, you can see gauges. I see fuel, the load on the engine, the boost, and uh, the temperature of the oil, temperature of the coolant. Now you can go ahead and select all kinds of different gauges. Um, let me go to, uh, let's see here. Um, let me click a gauge. Okay, so that just changes the look. Um, let me see here. Track history. Okay, that just shows you the information of the car. Um, let me go ahead and go back to settings so we can check something out. Settings, um, Let's see, okay, OEM settings, vehicle features, vehicle settings. Okay, this is all part of that Maestro thing. Gauges, okay, that's the same screen. Okay, Maestro module. Okay, um, so these are all the settings for the iDatalink Maestro. Um, now, there is a way to change these gauges. Each car has a uh, like if I go right here, okay, so that will take me to different gauges like the exhaust, gas temperature, air to fuel ratio, uh, mass airflow something, or pressure I think, and then intake temperature timing. So you can change these gauges. Every car is going to have different temperatures. Like this car shows me the oil temperature, but on my Scion, it shows me um, transmission and coolant, but it doesn't show oil on my Scion. So it just depends on the vehicle manufacturer. Now over here, I got the tire pressure for all the tires. You got the battery, 
and um, you got a check engine light if it comes up. Now if I hit settings on here, check engine alert, I want that on if I ever get a check engine light. Door alert, I want that on. I'm gonna show you the door alert. If I'll open this door right here and you can see that the door is open. I close it and it's off. Now I'll go back here, TPMS, tire pressure, I want that on. Uh, units, uh, you can have pressure or temperature. TPMS status, I have it on pressure. Set tire location. Now this basically, this is how you calibrate the tires after you get a tire rotation. What you'll do is you'll go to the tire machine and you'll deflate the front left one, it'll tell you. And then as you're deflating it, the horn will honk and it, that means it set that tire. Then you'll do the back left, front right, back right. That's how that works. I'll go back to home because I don't want to do that. So we'll go back to car features here so you can see that it shows the tire pressure, battery, and that's pretty much the iData Link Maestro. Now obviously if your original radio has the AC controls built in, you'll see this and it won't be grayed out. You better control the AC. And then if your original car has parking sensors, you'll see that. And then a uh, radar detector and if you have a screen in the back and you want to set that up. So that's pretty much the Pioneer um, 4660, the next, and um, this is pretty much how the radio works and the features of the radio. Um, on a scale of like 1 to 10, I would rate this about an 8 or 9. I mean, you're always going to have some bugs here and there. Uh, it hasn't really been too bad. Sometimes I have issues with Android Auto connecting, but that's because I have the Pixel. I just upgraded to Android 11, and um, it has a couple bugs built in, so that's more on Google and not Pioneer. Other than that, this screen is a capacitive touchscreen, just like your cell phone. It's not a passive one or resistive, uh, so it feels you know really smooth, just like your phone screen. But overall, these are the features and uh, what I think about the Pioneer AVH 4660. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to like it, and I'll be posting some more videos in the future. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.